Okay. All right, here we go. Oh. Is all my that we're doing this? Yes. Okay. We're already here. All right. We're all queued up. No pressure. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, documentation. <clears throat> We're, we're all, our project is only as good as their documentation is, how they always say. Um, that's what we say. Uh, so this, this actually started from a documentation project that we started in our office at Mobius. Um, I was like, hey, Ted, figure out what we're going to do about our documentation thing. And then he spent like a month and then he came back, and Tora. So we convinced the whole office to, um, First of all, we had the problem of all of our documentation was even worse off than Evergreen's documentation. It was all scattered all over the place in different Word files, Excel files, et cetera. So we had the problem of getting into the ASCII doc to begin with, and then we um, put it in a Git repo, and we made an Antoro uh, documentation website of it, and it's really great. And on the strength of that experience, I was like, man, we should do that for Evergreen, uh, because Antoro, it's, it's a stack of stuff that that's all been composed together um, to give us a whole bunch of stuff for free. I mean, I've got kind of, I kind of laid out some ideas here that Antora gives us that we could take advantage of, and some of the things that Remington has been saying that we've been struggling with as in the, in the dig in the dig group. Um, I don't know. But every time I go into the documentation um, folder and I go to write or put in an addition or something, especially when it comes to putting images into the documentation, and, you know, there's a folder that's called media, and that folder has 1,333 images in it, and it's all of the images for all the different documentation, and they, for all the different files everywhere. Um, so that's pretty messy. I mean, the naming convention that we're using is fairly loose, I think, too. So, um, Antora enforces a folder structure uh, where we shove our images for this particular document, this particular cubby hole, and so on and so forth. Um, it, it, Antora is, of course, Git from its inception. So, it requires, actually, it requires a Git repo or Git repos. So, we can have multiple repos in the uh, YAML config and it'll go out and just clone all the ones that you say and, and then switch to all the branches that you told it to switch to and it'll generate all the documentation that happens to be in any of those branches <coughs> in any number of Git repos. Of course, we're talking about just one Git repo, but it's capable of doing quite a bit of stuff. Uh, the other benefit about Antora uh, is that we don't need to rewrite any of our ASCII docs. We don't need to rewrite any of our ASCII docs. <laughs> uh, so we can just take them uh, as is. I did do one example for my branch that's out there. I took one. It was the one, the very top of the list of circulation. It was an A, so it was advanced holds uh, dot A doc. And I took that file and put it into Antora's um, guts, and uh, I got it. Got the images that belong to it. From the media folder full of 3, 000, you know, 1,300 images, I pulled out the 30 images that were in that particular file and put it over in Antora's assets uh, images directory. Um, and it, you know, and then poof, it, it just uh, Antora loved it. It, it. it drank the ASCII doc and <laughs> found the images and then created the site. Uh, but I did decide to edit the ASCII doc a little bit because I didn't like that it was all referencing the same folder. So in our current ASCII doc, Files, we reference media, the folder called media. So we don't have to edit our ASCII docs, but it might be a good idea to organize the media directory a little bit better. So maybe going forward into the Antora realm, we might actually make some small uh, find and replaces, you know, like replace the word media, you know, any references to images that are in the media directory, maybe change it to. Um, a directory that's related to the particular document that those images are for, you know, something like that. Um, for those of you that may not have looked up Antora yet, 
it, it uses modules. So it has a concept of modules, which is basically a subdirectory with a, a YAML file in it that Intor automatically consumes. Um, there's a bunch of standardized um, directives that you can feed it. So every module would have a like, okay, for this module, we're putting our assets images into this directory. And for this module, we're putting our assets examples into this directory and so on and so forth. You can define a lot of things so that whenever you write your documentation, you can just refer to images and it knows where that is. So it, it takes away, it decouples, it says on their website, decouples uh, URLs from the doc from the path and from the folder structure. So uh, Remington, you were saying that we in DIG have struggled with uh, linking pages within page, you know, other pages to other documentation within the documentation folder path that we currently have. So this kind of addresses that problem too. Um, like I already mentioned, it can uh, take in multiple branches such as the rail branch three, Three, any, you can do a, you can use star, you can just say all the three whatevers. Um, and it'll go and systematically open each branch and then uh, read the entor.yaml file for that branch and then suck in all the documentation from there. Um, it's mobile friendly out of the box. Uh, it does a lot of things automatically. Entora has blessed the world with a default template uh, that we can just leverage right out of the box. Um, it's not too bad. It, and there's a little picture of it down here, actually. Um, yeah, so that's the, this is, that's uh, really hard. Can we get it bigger? No, no, can't zoom it up. Oh, well, anyway, <laughs> there you go. That's a screenshot of the Apache Serve HTML uh, from the one branch that I got out there. I just made a quick nav on the left with some, um, you know, indented structure there. And there's just the one, like I said, advanced holes that I played with, and it just created the advanced hole page. Um, so we have breadcrumb across the top automatically given to us. We have some sub, some menus on the top right that, that's totally configurable. That's just out of the box stuff. We can edit that. There's also, I think it's chopped off. There's also um, edit this page. So by default, if you're looking at a document at the page, boom, goes to GitHub and edit, you know, you're editing the page. It's uh, just like a text editor, I assume. It's not like a fancy. It's only, it's just a link to the GitHub. Uh, okay. Or, or it's linked anywhere you want, uh, but in our case, it would probably be our GitHub um, spot. So breadcrumbs, navigation page, edit this page, those are some, some of the, just to name a few that we get uh, from Antora. There's also a search feature built in. Um, it's an add-on uh, called Lunar. Uh, and I looked at it and it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's just a couple more commands and like one config. Um, it uses uh, Node.js, so npm install is a part of its setup. But, um, and I was trying to find other people that are using Intora. Fedora, Fedora Linux is using Intora for their documentation site. So the question came up like how, how uh, long, what's the longevity of Antora? Is it gonna be around forever or whatever? But so. That's all I've got. I have a question. Yes. When you say it has to be organized into modules, the existing documentation is really just moving it into some directories? Yeah. Okay. So module, and you can module, you call it whatever you want. In my mind, a module would be like circulation. Sure. Cataloging, uh, serial, you know, each one of those is its own module. Which we're kind of already doing. Kind of is, yeah, it kind of already is that way, yeah. right. I know you talked about this at the dig meeting at the conference, but you do you have any plans to bring it to a regular DIG meeting for further discussion? Sure. This was the first time I ever compiled anything for this so, whole yeah. Because I know that there are people that weren't at the conference meeting yeah. that are regular DGs. You'd probably like to hear about it in my hand. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> 
Absolutely. Yeah, I don't know, I have much to, I mean, there, there's that screenshot. So I, I took a, a screenshot of what Intora did with our dot, with one dot, and it's this picture here. And then this exact same spot in the docs is located here. So there's a slight difference in interpretation. Uh, for, I think the easiest thing I could point to is the, in the eye down there, that box down there at the bottom that has, you know, info. Um, and Tora has it like, oh shoot, they cut it off. Oops, right below there. <laughs> slightly different. It's just slightly different. Anyway, anyway. Uh, fine, you know, all that stuff's customizable with CSS and, and uh, editable the, U, the UI component of it is. Have you, um, just to play devil's advocate for a moment, have you spent much time building wikis in GitHub proper? No. I'm wondering how this compares to the experience. I, and which we may never have, but it, 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 it's come up before, so it, you know, it seems like we should at least consider sure. that that could be a possibility. Sure. It, it, um it's built on ASCII Doctor. Okay. Which, and, and the reason I ask is because you can also build them in ASCII Doc directly in GitHub as well. Uh -huh. um, so, in some, potentially you could take the existing documentation and just load them up. It is low, yeah, yeah, right. By the way, this is prettier though, I'll yeah. say that. Debbie, mm -hmm. um, is this is joining us remotely and she didn't say that she'll plan on putting the stuff on the agenda for the next stocks meeting. Yeah, and Je yeah, okay. Jeff said mentioned the thing, the uh, the versions of your software. Yeah, so it, it does that. Um, I don't know if I got that clip in that screenshot or not at the bottom. Oh yeah, so the bottom left there by default out of the box, the Intura UI has the uh, version there listed and it says latest. That, you know, that's replacing with or a drop down for swapping versions. Um, and that kind of goes back to that branches stuff. So where you specify the branches, each individual branch would be pre-created with, with that YAML file to say, I'm version 3.2, and it'll come up with a drop down like that. And then handle a comment Oh, hmm. Can you know anything about that, Ted? Just your comments at the bottom. So, like, well, not that I know. Let me put it that way. I don't know. It's something on Bill's question. Like, wikis are usually not a structure. So, this, this you know, type of version and uh, wikis generally are more free form. Sure. Sure. No, I mean, there's, there's clearly some nice features to this. And as far as the comments question, it's really pretty much read only, right? Because the, you, the link that you mentioned to edit this page sends you somewhere else. Yeah. So yes. that's probably not a great uh, I, didn't, I didn't mention that specifically, but in Tor, when you build it, it just it just builds HTML. Okay. Yeah. It jumps out HTML, which kind of eliminates the comments idea. It doesn't have any kind of like PHP. Yeah, I mean, it's just straight HTML at the end of it. You could add it to the Right. The yeah, this page is a customizable link to go to, right? Git repository slash this file. Um, you know. Uh, do we have a Zoom link up here? It's been filled in. Oh, you did that? Oh, okay. Oh, you did. So you all, you're using this internally now? Right. And everyone's pretty happy with it? Yeah. 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 Um, can't show you here, but we have a more fleshed out, like, documentation site. I built the thermostat in the other room. I got some guys from my board. Sorry about that. No, no problem. Yes. Well, I, for some reason, expected this to go for a lot longer. Actually, I was thinking it would be really fast at first, and then I realized it's going to be a lot of questions. Well, 
That, that is your question for you, and that is, is this going to be easier for new people to use? I think it's going to be the same. Um, it's still the ASCII doc, or still the ASCII doc hurdle. Uh, that's that's the hurdle, right? Is the is the I don't know if the ASCII doc is the syntax, but it's just the process. You know. Submitting it? Or, yeah. Well, I think that's... The gene is doing the PW and the working really hard to better document. Uh-huh. Various workflows. As far as ASCII doc is up to the top. Okay. Well, I, all that's still the same, um, right. other than the folder where you stick it. It's still the same. It's still a Git repo and it's still an ASCII doc file and all that stuff. Um, it would be a command that would be placing it in that folder structure. Sorry. <clears throat> it would be a command where he's actually putting it in that folder structure, right? So, like, the new doesn't have to know if it goes here or do they? You know what I mean? How do they handle it now? I don't know. Yeah, but, I mean, you, if, hey, if, if you're doing it in GitHub, it does get reviewed um, by a submitter. And I would obviously expect that to remain the same. Yeah. So, I mean, I was trying and to. That is a complication here, right? Like knowing where. Where it goes. Yeah, sometimes half the file is figuring out what folder, what file to stick it into. I spent several minutes yesterday with that file. Well, it's not like this will ease some of that burden by coming up with standardized. Well, directory data. Is that the part of the thing for it or stand for it just about generating for duration? That's really it. It's main thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, I mean, I'm not being flipped. No. I, I, I'm, I'm serious. Is this tool going to help us with the process pieces? <laughs> other than the folder structure, other than enforcing the folder structure, um, no. I saw something about a search Yeah. Yeah, there's the lunar thing. <coughs> you could run this all on your laptop, so you know, test it and then push it to a branch and then it could be checked out and look over. <coughs> That's part of the process. So I'm just That's true. Maintain your time. Like all the docs on your laptop. Yeah, you can kind of see it generated prior to getting it all the way up to the server. And you, you know, it's just a matter of typing in the commands. So there's, there is that extra benefit. And in Dora, being that it's a documentation uh, project, it has great documentation. Uh, and of course, they use it for it to write out their own documentation. So. And we learned yesterday that that's licensed under the Mozilla Public License. Right. For, for code inclusion. Question yeah. that was that was brought up yesterday. Yeah. Somehow. Oh, it's not scrolling down. You can version and not version components. Oh, so some pages may not need to be repeated. They can apply to all versions. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, I'll be honest. Some, a lot of these features, we, you know, we at Mobius have. You know, we don't have like versions of the software. This is like documentation of it's slightly is not the same thing as Evergreen. We're we're documenting like our processes and things internally. We don't have well if you're in version two and then you process it differently, it's not something like that. So it's really just master for us, but there's a lot of neat things in, that Intora can do that seem like we have to be able to do. Um, yeah. And just we could do it all ourselves. You know, I'm pretty sure, but it's all you know. It's kind of for free with almost no effort. You know, moving files into a directory and then you're done. That's pretty great. Right. Um, right. So, so moving forward, though, like how you know the migration process. I mean, what I did with my branch, I just copied. I didn't move anything. So everything's still in the old docs directory that I copied from the Android directory. Um, so, you, I mean, I guess you could duplicate it in the short term to see, like, have the Intora version published online as well as the original one published online both ways. I don't know what everybody would want to do in that regard. Are you planning to do both versions? No, well, no, hey, I'm, okay. uh, no, I was, 
what I did just to, for ease of like, no oh. destruct no no destruction, I just copied one file and its related images into an Antora tree and let it build it. And, um, so I don't know if it needs to just be wholesale, and you know, if we were to adopt this, you know, we just do everything all at once. And no, I mean in Mobius. Do you, do you still do you plan to keep both? Oh, Mobius never had. I mean, there wasn't. We had a bunch of word files and some random stuff that was scattered all over the internet. Okay. And so, now, yeah, yeah, we just we, we deleted all that stuff. Yeah, and uh, and preferred the ASCII doc. Central Git repo for all of it. Yeah. Do you recall if it has export options, kind of like we have now on the doc site, where you can do it PDF view and HTML view? Yeah. View. Well, that that in itself, I don't think, has anything to do with Tora. It's just a passing yeah. process. Yeah. Yeah. So all that. that would be the same. Okay. Um, you can still generate PDFs. Although, funny enough, this came up where we wanted to convert some of our Mobius documentation. PDFs, and um, we we liked the way our presentation layer was after Antora had done its processing, created the HTML. So when we went presented to somebody in a PDF, and you let ASCII doc like take our ASCII doc raw stuff, and not with Antora's UI over the top of it, generate PDF. It didn't look like what we wanted it to look like. So there was another tool that would take a web page, you know, the finished HTML page that Antora made, and make that into a PDF. Exactly the way we expected it to look. So there are solutions for that. And Dan commented in the channel by using ASCII doctor. Oh yeah, uh, we can only yeah yeah right. So that's kind of what I was saying. So I was just poking around with the first time I looked at it. So, but I was doing their search, and that is really cool because if I just search for like a keyword that I found on the page. And it shows me all the pages that it's on and like I guess what folder it's in or like what version the art would be. Yeah, I haven't played with Lunar. I don't know if that's Lunar or not. I don't know, but that is cool. It might, it might be. <laughs> but that, I mean, it very well might be Lunar. I mean, well, that the Google site search that we have on Don's drive is never going to have some work. Yeah, it's well, got a, I just, okay, so. She's got the as you type. Yeah, well, like, so I just search on ours for like my items or whatever, right? And it'll say, yeah, it does. It says it in the flipping around. I was just like, it's my own page. It's not mine. It looks cool. Yeah. It's the presentation, right? Yeah, right. It looks it's good. It's the presentation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have yet to uh, implement Lunar on ours because we adopted that for our before version 2.1 that's out there now. So we're going to need to upgrade our. Uh, Doc server to Antora 2.1 before we put Lunar on there. We just don't have the provision time to do so. Anyway, so that thing, anyway, that's Antora. We've really thought it worked out pretty good for us. So um, I think for 20% of the work, you can get 80% of the sweetness. Okay. Thanks, Blake. Yeah. yeah. Now I segue into the next thing, I guess. Let's see here. Now we have Blake. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta go off the stage. Okay. Yeah, right. Okay. 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 Yeah, turn around. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> One of those that I lose is now on the page. Completely ignoring my work, I mean, this page was all work. The content. Well, let's see. We're, I was the next thing I, so I just threw it on the agenda, and that is Elastic Search. Anybody want to talk about it? Um, basically, basically, I want it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know what some people left, but anyway, um, I think I think by this, there's a story. I mean, uh, Jeff, who's still on there, Jeff 
had showed showed me a couple of like probably more like three years ago or more, three or four years ago, that they had um, changed their search engine on their front end to using Elasticsearch on the back end. Of course, it was totally hacked to pieces. It was like Ruby on Rails and and uh, completely different OPAC, but still running on Elasticsearch. And I was just really impressed by you know how fast it was. Why can't you know that sounds like we're halfway there, you know, kind of thing. Um, and just time goes on, but yeah, it's been something that I've been thinking about, and so I kind of got serious about it just in the last few months and put a bug report out about Elasticsearch. Just the just just the idea, the notion that can we just make it an option, not necessarily the thing, but can we make Evergreen talk to Elasticsearch if we wanted it to, you know, and what would it take, you know, uh, when you press the enter button on the search box, you know, it climbs down the uh, Perl stack and then instead of asking Postgres, maybe you could ask Elasticsearch, it's basic, you know, like maybe, and all, but everything else, everything else is the same. You know, can what can we do to just get it to maybe do that if we so desire? Um, and so I started working on it and I put out the bug and the bill's like, hey, uh, I did that already. <laughs> so so now we have now we have a, a basically a completely working uh, it was working when I was messing with it uh, last week, um, Bill's branch for integrating lots of search into evergreen. Um, in summary, it's installing Elasticsearch, separate, you install Evergreen, you install Elasticsearch, and then uh, you execute the Perl script that Bill's got out there to, um, with all of your database connection pieces hooked up to it, log, you know, logs in Postgres, gathers the information, and, and pushes it into Elasticsearch. So you gotta load Elasticsearch, it's completely empty. Elasticsearch is completely empty out of the box, of course, so you gotta load up the data. And uh, he's got the Perl script doing that, so that I just, I did, uh, there's a bunch of switches you can add, add to that particular uh, command, like uh, only load uh, bids that were from last month or have to touch since whatever date and time stamp you want. So I chose like two months worth of data. It loaded five gigs worth of stuff into Elasticsearch, mm -hmm. and uh, and then it just it just worked. I mean, it was truly amazing. So I was on IRC like, is all this working? Uh, how do I know it's working? It seems like it's working, but it doesn't seem like it should have worked. <laughs> that uh, so yeah, it's currently in its current baby stages. It's working on the experimental catalog search. If you use, um, if you just you know check out Build Branch and then Build Evergreen um, from that branch, uh, by default out of the box, it just works at the uh, experimental catalog search. So. You've got a nice, uh, Bill's got a nice uh, tech rep doc in there to give you the, you know, the spiel about you know, installing this particular version of Elasticsearch and how to load Elasticsearch. Details are all there and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so, it be real time update? It, um, it, it updates as, as often as you run the script until it updates. So, if you have a prompt that's running every minute or five minutes or whatever, that's how frequent. Um, a, little, a little bit of the history on my side of this is we, we our catalog is outsourced and they're using Solar or whatever they're doing and the holdings update there take well more than minutes. You know, they're, they're, the data is not that's not that means it's decent, but it's not real time. Um, and that is working perfectly well. They can send plenty of out of every one sort of these holdings and like around the eight. Um, I'm also not having yeah, well, I thought the staff would be a little bit more concerned about that, so I made it to at least update as quickly as you can run. And you can run multiple scripts parallel, too. You could have three things just running the wrong things, keeping it updated. I, I didn't want to get into the database breakers because this is just way easier. That, that could be done later. Um, the, um, the reason I hadn't mentioned it before is I wanted to get to a point where I had something that our staff had at least had a chance to experiment with. Um, and then I was going to sort of present, okay, this is the thing I built and this is how it can be used by other sites or whatever. And we're, we're, I was almost there. So this is the timing this, this, this still works out really well. Yeah, well, sorry. No, 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 no. This, I mean, really, the sooner the better. Um, I just, I, you know, you want, you want them in the works. And um, most of the 
heavy lifting went in the last year or so when I finally decided, okay, this is not a fire Because mm -hmm. um, there's always there's always an open you know support request. The search is taking long. Right. Search taking long. Search taking long. Um, so the the thing that I build it does do it does take holding this information into account, filtering, um, and various other filtering, but it's not it doesn't have all the features that Evergreen has. So the part of the discussion uh, for anyone who wants to use it or whether or not we want to hold it Evergreen proper or not, part of that is you are going to be giving up something for someone else. Mm -hmm. And that needs to be documented and well understood. And some of those things can be added, but they're not there yet. Yeah. Right. So I can speak uh, a little bit uh, about uh, COA's experience uh, with a similar decision. Um, then actually, okay. So, um, uh, COA had uh, you know uh, a sort of off in the very beginning, uh, you know, using uh, MySQL and other areas um, that quickly ran into uh, limitations. Um, so, uh, COA moved uh, to a search engine uh, called Zebra, which comes uh, from index data. It's what if you specifically Laravel specific or at least uh, Laravel adjacent to search engines around. Um, does the or uh, index arbitrary XML or mark XML uh, as the case may be? Um, and uh, its uh, a search interface is uh, Z3950 uh, or um, SRU, SRU. Um, so you know, Zebra is a solid uh, project, um, but um, you can't really you know, do real-time item availability. Um, you still have to um, do periodic updates uh, to bring in certain information, or item status information. Um, but like the last search, uh, and this is kind of a trade-off uh, for any search engine, um, like the last search, um, searches are very, very speedy. Um, Updates are relatively slow. Now, yeah, emphasis is on relative um, because um, over time uh, they've uh, gone faster, but it's never going to be quite uh, you know as immediate as you know doing um, something uh, deeply in that space uh, like uh, we do in So, um, Elasticsearch uh, has been available as a uh, alternate search engine uh, uh, in Coa for. Uh, several years at this uh, point. And, you know, it's very much a case where there are trade-offs. Um, you know, speed-wise um, wasn't particularly the concern. I thought the Zebra and the search are already a speed. Um, ease of the configuration was a big deal. Um, you know, with uh, Zebra, you're ultimately uh, producing that uh, XSL style sheets uh, to transfer archive by one my data into an ingest uh, format uh, that you know, Zebra uses to parcel out uh, bits of the bar record uh, between search indexes. Um, we can probably count on the figures of uh, one hand, maybe to anybody who's not actually a co op developer uh, who's uh, ever touched uh, the index of um, and that's the search, or at least the way Koa uses it. Um, on the other hand, the configuration is much less simpler. You know, Koa is essentially generated a sort of a JSON. Uh, indexing rules uh, that are driven from a simple um, configuration interface. You know, well, it's not to uh, the large can correctly uh, specify uh, our fields and subfields to include in uh, various indexes. Um, Another trade-off is Zebra gives you Z Z3950 search for free, which of course matters at libraries. Um, and as a search obviously does not have a native uh, Z3950 module. And so one of the trade-offs is at the moment, um, because nobody ever got around uh, to it, if you choose to use uh, as a search as uh, your backend, um, you can no longer easily um, set up your COA system uh, is even a pretty target. Um, the workaround that some sites uh, do is to, okay, double the storage 
and also learn the zebra uh, to provide uh, the zebra and that kind of the service. Um, another thing is so uh, that uh, you know, some of the expressivity um, that have been painfully worked out uh, using zebra, you know, isn't about one Elasticsearch. And it's not because of a limitation in Elasticsearch per se, because, you know, ultimately uh, Elasticsearch can be configured to do what you want it to, to do in the search engine. And of course, it has a much, much uh, bigger, broader development community than Zebra ever did. But there's also a kind of uh, new standards uh, that, that never got to uh, close the typical OS transition to Elasticsearch. So, I mean, that would be kind of my number one, you know, a bit of a caution about all this is, as Bill said, to make the trade-offs uh, explicit and uh, to not embark in a uh, Elasticsearch uh, conversion project and assume that you won't use some functionality because you will. Now, some of it may be functionality that in the final analysis actually doesn't matter uh, for you know, the vast majority of our users, but maybe for something that's meant to be future uh, complete, um, and we haven't done you know, even not spoken about the Florida record so yet. Um, you know, isn't uh, going to be um, just a matter of um, you know, tossing a bunch of uh, you know, data into Elasticsearch into an Elasticsearch instance? You know, the data part that configuration and uh, expecting it uh, to uh, just work. So. Yeah, but that said, you know, it, you know, it's obviously quite a compelling that, um, you know, you know, with a uh, with a bit of attention to pay to server resources, you know, it's easier to go produce a speedier, um, you know, full text search uh, with, um, you know, Elasticsearch uh, that it you know has been uh, with the Postgres, but then that's where we get into potential trade-offs in that uh, there are you know, definitely improvements that we made uh, to Postgres and so full text and search, and also some uh, specific uh, investment opportunities uh, to consider, you know, throwing money at uh, you know, a couple of uh, specific uh, groups that you might get uh, large scale improvements uh, to Postgres and uh, full text search, uh, which of course is what uh, underlines uh, So, I mean, you know, just not to say let's not pursue Elasticsearch, um, but, you know, we also do need to recognize that there are going to be trade-offs. It's not going to be an instantaneous thing. All that said, you know, I think that there would be some interesting things to try, uh, at least on a development basis, with parallel setups, where you're both using Postgres and using Elasticsearch uh, in a GFDA mode. Easily switch between them. Um, I want to follow on with that last part that uh, Gail talked about. I was actually reading recently about a um, company that transitioned uh, uh, some of their back end stuff. I don't even remember whether it was to or from, but it was between Postgres and Mongo. Um, they had, they were using, I think they were using Mongo as so maybe there is a document store and they wanted to but they, used, they used Postgres for a lot of other stuff and they wanted to see if they could transition between and they built out um, a relatively simple abstraction layer um, that let them fire requests at both and uh, say we're only going to return the requests from the Mongo side or the Postgres side but you get the timing for all incoming requests on both. Hmm. So you could see what was actually going on, where where timing was, was, uh, was different. Um, and I don't think it would be too difficult to do that. Not, not with what Bill's done out of the box right now. It wouldn't be hard or it wouldn't be easy to do that right now that way. But I think we could, I don't think there would be a whole lot to, to throw that we would be throwing out and maybe just adding more on to um, be able to find the right level in the search stack 
which and this is something we talked about two or three years ago, was finding the right level in the search stack to um, decide to uh, to put in a switch, you know, just a train yard rail switch yeah. that says everything's going to go over here or everything's going to go over there, um, and doing that would give us uh, some more flexibility too. We wouldn't necessarily have to do all searches through one or the other. Uh, it, like Galen said, we haven't even talked about authority searches, which really comes down to um, the complex interaction between bib records and authority records, especially in browse. Um, and that's non-trivial. Yeah. Uh, this the <laughs> the overall schema between the two that's linking the two is uh, a dozen tables and lots of triggers, and lots and lots of logic, and figuring out how to re-implement that in Elasticsearch would be non-trivial. Um, but all that aside, there may be a way to take the, either the Elasticsearch service that Bill has right now or some, some uh, modification of it and, for instance, put a query parser driver so right now we have one query parser driver, we have Postgres. We right. can put an Elasticsearch query parser driver so that they'd speak the same dialect at the at, you know at the API level and above. Right. And then we don't have to worry about, well, we can take our time improving the, the stuff between where we need to parse the query and where we're displaying results to the user. That's a lot of code there. Um, and it would mean kind of Taking the it would it would mean um, I know that the Elasticsearch is delivering like facets along with the list of record IDs and all that stuff, right, Bill? Yeah. So it would mean things like taking the Elasticsearch full result and you know and pulling it apart to make it look like today it would be easiest to make it look like the uh, the tradition the Postgres search result at the data structure level. And then passing it on up, and and that's kind of the level at which we would need we could bifurcate on the query going down to the system. Say, all right, that's where we're going to shove in a query parser driver, yeah. for Elasticsearch that just transmutes whatever, and it's probably actually pretty close. To the the search syntax is it fairly close to native? There's a Not variety of, uh, they do offer what they call a query stream syntax, which is just different enough that it wouldn't map directly to one or the other. Right. Um, I was finding, I started the project where you can send in the original Evergreen style search, and then I get a query parser object, and then I pull those guys apart and then build the Elasticsearch from that. Um, but the Elasticsearch, going directly to the Elasticsearch syntax, uh, Simplify a lot of things in in the implementation, and there's a lot. You can do a lot more. Actually, uh, it's not that you can do a lot more. It's just that the nesting, the boolean, things like that. The way I was doing it was really difficult. Right. So there's certainly probably a better way to do it. But um, uh, the, unfortunately, the query streams don't map up exactly. They use certain. Like you have to put parentheses in certain places where we don't have to, and we have to. Uh, um. I don't know, it's like keywords are different or something. I don't know, but they're it, it, they didn't go back to that. Yeah. Well, but you know that that's, a, that's, that's that's a yeah. that's a translating one. That's what pearls for. Yeah, <laughs> we can manage that. But if we can manage to have a single dialect, and that doesn't necessarily mean that the dialect that we speak above doesn't wouldn't be benefit from insights that oh, that Elasticsearch brings, and they're um, queries the syntax. So, but yeah, there's a there. I don't think this is going to be a this doing bib searches in the experimental catalog. Yes, it's speed, but you know um, the speed is a question. Yes, that will never be a question. There's um, anyone who wants to look to have a million plus bibs on a tiny little testing and, and everything here. Right. No, I I. I yeah, I'm not, not arguing against okay. that. Yeah. Not, not at all. Um, but that's not the only thing to consider. If we can, you know, if, if we can continue to make improvements in the native, it's still going to have more 
library focused search functionality for the foreseeable future just because re uh, you know rediscovering the needs and then embedding that back into the configuration of Elasticsearch is going to take a long, long, long time. Um, so I have the uh, I have the benefit of A of not having to worry about patient interfaces and BDR staff don't use a lot of the features. Yeah. So for me it was an obvious choice to dive into. But to get it from what I have into something that is near compatible to Evergreen combo, I agree it's in the C stuff. Yeah. Um, and one thing to think about is that we have the opportunity to change what we're doing on the Evergreen side too. Because the benefit that Elasticsearch is the, the, the main thing that Elasticsearch is benefiting from is not having to have a normalized schema for the data. Um, the, the core, the actual core search, the T search to function that looks for um, matches to, to strings, for, especially for things like overbroad dog or monkey um, searches. That's, that's fast. I mean, it's not as fast as Elasticsearch, and it probably will never be. But it's certainly fast enough. It's the fact that now you've got to look at, uh, you can get the list of records that have the word dog in it in under second in any database that you can point me at, properly tuned and on a modern version. From then is going and looking at all of the up-to-date, real-time visibility information for right. those, you know, 50,000, 200,000 records, whatever it is. Right. And the, the benefit Elasticsearch has is it's embedded in the same blob of data that found dog. It doesn't have to go and find all of that information. We've made some uh, changes with the visibility record or the visibility caching stuff recently that has significantly improved search speed. Um, and we found some, honestly, some uh, dumb things that we've been doing all along, like doing searches twice, that Galen and I found one thing where we were able to remove, what, uh, a solid two seconds off of every search period across the board a few months ago. I don't remember the bug number on that, but it went in relatively recently, or it's been posted for inclusion at least. Um, and that's just like high level stuff that's going on in the in, after the search results are returned and before they're rendered to the user. We've got a lot of stuff going on in there. Uh, and the, the, the new interface is benefit, benefiting from not having anything, not having any of that, uh, that legacy in between. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's not, you know, ma it, making it faster, but, uh, you know, just to compare, you're never going to be able to compare apples to apples no. because they're the, the data sources have different purposes. But we do need to make sure that you know we learn from the Elasticsearch experiments and try to apply some of that benefit to sure. the the built-in as well. So I think there's probably always going to be a need for it because the fastest way to get the data that Elasticsearch is going to need is for it to be processed real time as it's being updated, as opposed to having to, uh, you know, having to shovel XML over to Elasticsearch um, and then have it do everything all, you know, that we used to do or whatever. If we swap it out, it's still going to be beneficial to be processing the data mm -hmm. uh, immediately, at least for the time being. Well, this is exactly why I put it on the agenda. I just wanted to talk and just have the discussion. It's perfect. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. In my mind, it seemed reasonable uh, to just have the option. You know, not necessarily the, that it's the thing, but that it is something that we could if we wanted to or somebody wanted to try or put on or something. Well, once you get past n, n equals 1, you really ought to put a, the, a little bit of extra effort in to make it you know, where you can plug anything in, anything reasonable in, uh, given time and, you know, implementation to it. Yeah. So, 
you know, if you have somebody that knows the knows, I don't know, what's another you know, solar, solar or whatever, yeah. right? Or raw lucene or whatever. They use the lucene. They use the lucene. So every basically everything is lucene. We can have super close to the. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I agree with you that that's the best route forward if that's, a, if that's a thing we want, is to be able to plug in some other search back in. So search means a lot more than bib search. Sure. And search means a lot more than, yeah. uh, you know, even, yeah. yeah. No, I think it, everything that's in there, as far as search goes, is perfectly sound, and it could stay exactly the same. It's that, it's that user experience on the front end where where it was just instant, you know, like I work at Mobius and they, they have a you know a triple I inst a huge install of you know millions of I don't know how many seventy million something or other bibs and then you would go to the search mobius that org instant. Instantaneous. You know, it's like it's kind of embarrassing. I mean I feel like <laughs> What's going on here? So uh, and that, it's really just that one thing, you know. As far as I'm concerned, everything else, can, the, search, the, the searching inside the stat client can even be still, still be with those grids, still have all of the awesomeness that we get from all the benefits of um, Postgres feature set. Um, that's all. No, I think I think we're all more or less on the same page. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see the experiment continue. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if it ends up that uh, it's useful to do that as an option for everybody, super. Yeah. All right. That's me. Thanks, Blake. Yeah.